Remember, our topic is conservation of momentum and conservation of mechanical energy. And you have already done most of the work, but here is our plan for the day. Number one, we will look at some book work that you have to know. Then secondly, uh, then we'll take action. We'll have to find an equation, substitute, and check our answers and our units. And then in the last instance, we will summarize today's work. And of course, you must have homework, which will come from uh, previous question papers. So let's get into the uh, review of our book work. But first of all, I've got to tell you something, I think. It is important that you realize that in the conservation of momentum and the conservation of mechanical energy, it is normally asked as a combined question as you've spotted up to now. What we're going to do is just reinforce and consolidate those ideas that are very important, and then we'll work through one or two examples. Uh, let me just go to the book work. Now, please remember, the book work is an essential part. It's work you can prepare beforehand, and it's easy mark because you walk with that knowledge into the classroom, into the examination room. So make sure or ensure that you have your book work under the knee, that you really know your book work very well. Practice them until you know them inside out. And let's get into the first part, which will obviously deal with the law of conservation of momentum. Let's go to my slide again. Good. So in page 10 in your book, you will find the law of the conservation of momentum. Now, in last year's papers, we found that the learners did not do too well in this one. They confused some of the laws and principles. Well, you ensure that you actually know. This is on page 10 in your notebook. I put an asterisk there, which I will explain later. The way we write, we say the total linear momentum. In other words, we're adding up the momentum of different parts. That remains constant as long as the system, that means the many parts, are isolated, away from anything, away from forces, especially away from external forces. And then the momentum will stay the same, both in size and the direction, because momentum is a vector. So what are we saying? We say the sum of the momentum before anything happens, like a collision or explosion, must be equal to the sum of the momenta after the collision or after the explosion. That means that we can rewrite it differently. We can say the sum of the momenta initially, the sum of the initial momenta must be equal to the sum of the final momenta. That is what we mean by the total remains constant. So whether a collision happens in the system or whether an explosion happens, the sum of the momenta must be exactly equal. And lastly, you know how we rewrite this. Let's say we have two bodies that's in the system. Then this body with mass 1 and body with mass 2 must be the same bodies after the explosion or the collision, mass 1 and mass 2. And let's say this one has a velocity, initial velocity, and that one has an initial velocity. That's body number two. Then we find if they are combined after the collision, like in this case, then we write it this way, add up the masses, and both of them go at the same combined velocity, which is the final velocity. OK, just one thing about that. If you found that difficult, that part, it is in your notes as well. Go over it. You need to have a good grip on that, the way of writing it. I'll tell you later what are the different ways of doing it. But that you understand the concept in terms of the definition and also how we represent it symbolically. I would like to say to the schools, Allo Secondary, Mannenberg, and Desmond Pilo Tutu Secondary High School, welcome to us this afternoon. I would like the others to log in because I think this is an important part of your revision. Let's just look at the screen one more time and look at the linear momentum. We therefore say, we write it this way, 
the sum of the momenta before a collision is equal, must be equal to, because it must remain constant, it means it must be the same size in magnitude, is equal to the sum of the momenta after the collision. This is just another way of writing, and this is just looking at the momentum of one, let's say, car, and you add it to the momentum of the other car, that will give us the sum, and that is equal to the these two momenta on this side, but if they stuck together, if they're embedded in one another, then we find we add the two masses first, etc. If you have trouble with this one, uh, please ask your teacher, but we'll speak about that later on again. Now, let's go to the second principle that you have to know. That is the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy, and you will find this on page 44 in your book. Right, let's see what that principle says. It says the total mechanical energy of an isolated system is conserved. And by that we mean that the sum of the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy in an isolated system remains constant as long as there are conservative forces like gravity, of course, you know that. So it's very important that you actually ensure that you understand what this means. What's the way we normally use the equations in mathematics? This is how we do it. We say that if we have one spot, let's say spot A, point A, then mechanical energy total must be the same as the mechanical energy total at another spot. And we normally mean the height. One height versus the other, which I'll talk about to you later. Another way of writing this, mechanical energy at A must be equal to the mechanical energy at B. That means the total mechanical energy must be conserved, meaning it must be the same. Okay, another way of writing it, mechanical energy from grade 10, you know, consists of two types of energy. It is the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy. That makes up mechanical energy. At point O, A must be equal to point B's gravitational pot potential energy plus kinetic energy. That's our normal way of writing it. We can use other substances like at the top, at the bottom, whatever you want to, but it's important that you follow what's in the question. Next one. Now we expand this gravitational pot potential energy to those you find on the data sheet and this is the way we write it. That one becomes mass multiplied by the gravitational constant multiplied by the height at point A plus half the mass of the same body and its velocity squared at point A. At another point, you have exactly the same for gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy, half mv squared. So this is the normal way of writing it. Can I give you a tip, quickly? Will you always ensure that you practice u is equal to mgh? u, gravitational potential energy, m, mass, g, and h at one point, and then k, kinetic energy, is equal to half mv squared. Always ensure that you understand that and you write it out. I'll say more about it later and when we apply it in our calculations. Right, I think we are now on our way. That is just background for you. But let me just tell you that you, when you walk into the examination, you must always have, in a physics paper in any case, you must always have a good set of tools. And here it comes. Just watch the screen quickly. Right, so this was our last statement. Normally, you write it this way and then that way. Practice it, please, and ensure that you can do it with your eyes closed. So, here are your tools, your data sheet. Where are we today? We are in energy. So, let us see where we are. In no, maybe we will force this first. There is MV, the momentum. That is what we... So momentum of one car will have that, momentum of another car will have that, momentum of a bullet will have that, 
momentum of a block will have that same formula. And here we are in energy. Let's, let's see the, this comes from your data sheet which you get in examinations. There it is, potential energy, mgh, or u is equal to mgh. Then we have kinetic energy is equal to half mb squared, or ek as you used to call it, half mb squared. So these are the things that you'll be getting in examinations. You need to know how to put it together. Just a minute. If I say you need to know how to put it together, it means that you must know how to talk conservation of momentum. So you just don't have one piece. It means you have a number of objects which where you must add the total momentum that must be conserved in isolated systems. So let's look at that quickly and remind you again how you've got to remember how to write down your conservation of momentum in the examination. I call this on the screen. I call this and I say, yeah, are other equations that you need to know that you will not get on your data sheet. 